everybody. Honora Wolf here from Blue Poppy TV, and today we're going to demonstrate making a traditional uh, pain compress and how to use it. So, to start with, let's talk about compresses. Um, very commonly used traditionally at the hospitals in China. When I was a student there in 83, 84, 85, 86, they had them cooking in the room where I worked um, doing Tuena. They were always on the stove and they were always kept hot and then they would make a new one every week. So this is a very traditional methodology. It may not be of interest to some of you, but if you specialize in pain management, this could be a very nice addition to what you do in your clinic. Very effective. So there's lots of herbs you could be using. I don't have every herb here that could go in an external compress. Notably, there is no Ruxiang and there is no Moyao um, on this table, but uh, you certainly could add those. One of the nice things about using Moyao and Ruxiang in a compress or a liniment or some sort of external application is that it doesn't have to go through the stomach. And um, anybody who's tried to use those ingredients internally knows that people can only take them for a couple of days before their stomach can no longer handle it. So those are two that are not here, but you certainly could add them. This is just today's recipe. It could be, there could be lots of different recipes. So we have Taoren, we have Zirantong, we have Chuanchong, Donggui Wei, Sumu, Churshao, and Honghua. And you'll see the Honghua is tied up in um, a little uh, cheesecloth bag so that it doesn't get all over everything. The other things that you'll need is a stove or a hot plate, um, a gallon of water heating up, some kind of um, a colander, with a pretty, this one is pretty fine mesh wire, which is what you want. Some good rubber gloves and a cloth that you don't care what color it turns because the Hong Hua and if you add Ruxiang and, and Moyao as well are going to stain it. The Sumu to some extent as well are going to stain it red or orange, so you have to have a cloth you don't care about. Now, there are two ways that you could do this. If you wanted to be able to strain all the dregs at the end, you would put your colander in first and you put all the herbs in the colander. I do it the opposite way. I cook all the herbs and then I put the colander in to push them down so that I can rinse my cloth out after they're cooked without the dregs getting on the cloth. And that's what I'll show you uh, when we come back after this is all cooked. So this is going to be uh, a regular cooking show where we come back 45 minutes from now um, and we see what happens in terms of treatment. So let's, let's take these down so they don't move around. Uh, I'm just going to put them in here. So what you note know about these herbs is that you have, this is a, a chi mover that stops pain. You have blood quickening medicinals, um, chi moving medicinals, pain stopping medicinals. Those are the main things that you're trying to do with any hot compress. This is um, a pretty standard possible combination. The last goes in the Honghua, which it'll take it a while to sink down in there. I'm going to turn the stove on here and we're going to let it cook for about 45 minutes. It's in a gallon of water and by the way there were 15 grams of each medicinal and that's, you know, I just kind of made that up. There's no rules about if you like other herbs better or you think the dosage should be a little higher, but this is really enough because with um, one, two, three, four, five, seven, that's um, about a little over a hundred grams of stuff in this gallon of water. 
which will cook down, you know, by maybe a pint by the time we're done. Um, and then we will demonstrate how this is traditionally used in a Chinese hospital for pain management. So I'll see it in about 45 minutes. 45 minutes later, through the magic of TV, we're back instantaneously, and we have, you can see the steam rising off the pot, and so the herbs are all cooked. We've turned the heat off a little while ago, so now I'm going to take the colander, which pushes all of the herbs down and out of the way so that they don't get all over the cloth. And I've got uh, rubber gloves on to protect my hands from the hot water. Well, this doesn't feel too bad. All right. So now you want to get as much of the as much of this off of here as you can. So you have a nice hot. It's pretty warm. I'm going to take this glove off so that I can. Okay. So the way that this works so that it doesn't cause the patient undue pain and suffering is that you're going to place it and pat it and take it off. Place it and pat it and take it off. Because it's hot. But this way they can take the heat and it's not going to cause them any pain. You might have to do this three or four or five times hot squeeze without a glove on. Again. You can see that this is already starting to get red a little bit. And if I were just to leave it on there, it would probably be a little too hot. But just Putting it on and patting it and taking it off, putting it on and patting it and taking it off. So, you could use this on pretty much any body part. And you would do it until you think it's warm enough and there's some erythema on the skin. And this is a great adjunct to a Toyna treatment, to a cupping treatment, to an acupuncture treatment. Um, and then once it's cooled off a little bit, then you can lay it and leave it on there and the person won't wince. But for the first few minutes, it would be a little too hot for that. So that's how you make a hot poultice with Chinese herbs. Now, this setup, which you see we just have a hot plate, and it could be a single as opposed to a double, a pot, a nice colander, some cloths that you don't care about too much, what color they turn. It could be old kitchen towels, it could be pieces of flannel, it could be almost anything. A pair of rubber gloves, and you can keep this um, in your clinic for up to a week. You just have to warm it up again the next day. So um, if you like traditional um, external approaches like this, I hope you'll give it a try. I certainly like using this in uh, in my clinic. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks, Margie.